Welcome to Soundbridge Music's Featured Artist Interview. In this series, we get to know front range artists who not only shape the local music scene, but who joined with Soundbridge Music and its mission to use the power of music to improve the lives of individuals and bring communities together. We're so happy to be here today with Aya McGuire, Soundbridge Music's Featured Artist of July 2018. Sandcastle King comes out July 13th, 2018, coming up very soon. Yeah. It's a very <laughs> it's soon. really soon. <laughs> very excited, very nervous, looking forward to it. All of the above. Nervous. Um, I'm really excited for the show itself, the release party. I think that is going to feel really, really good. I've thought about, you know, when I was still making the album, I thought about the release party itself a lot. And now that it's almost here, I sort of... Um, yeah, I kind of can't believe that it's actually happening. <laughs> <laughs> but it is. It is. Has it fallen into place in ways that you thought were, were good and wonderful, or have there been some nice little snafus along the way and hang-ups, things to overcome? There's definitely, you know, I think, I think the process of releasing something that you've been working on for as long as an album takes, um, I think there's a range of different emotions. Um, you know, when I first finished making the album, I actually... Um, I actually went through kind of a difficult emotional period for a few weeks because this thing that had been, you know, something that I'd dreamed of doing for so long was now finished. And it sort of left me, you know, kind of bewildered. <laughs> What's next? Like, what, what shit? Like, now what? Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, the release itself, you know, now it's been, the album's been complete for several months now. And so, um, a lot of people have listened to it because I did a Kickstarter and so I've given it to my Kickstarter backers and um, have received their feedback and um, so in a way the release itself I actually don't know what that's going to feel like because in a big way um, the Sandcastle King has already been given to the community of people who know and care about it um, and so yeah it actually leaves me in kind of a weird position like I don't exactly know what the release itself is going to feel like it'll, it'll be on Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> Any significant takeaways from recording? That's always been one of my favorite From processes. recording itself? Yeah. Yeah, making an album um, in like the studio, this didn't so much happen to me when I made Fireflies, but being in the studio and getting to work with a drummer and a bassist and, um, you know, add layers and layers and layers, it really changed the way that I hear music and that was something that I really found surprising. I, um, like, I re-listened to one of my favorite albums of all time, the Fleet Foxes debut self-titled album. It's just, I love that album and I've listened to it a thousand times and suddenly I heard things that I'd never heard before. And, um, the little nuances. Yeah, like little, there. yeah, little pieces that I just never noticed. And like songs that I loved and had always loved, I suddenly knew why I loved them in a way that I hadn't known before. And that is very a strange realization. Like, I've been writing songs for so long and been in music for so long that I sort of had one idea, like, oh, I love this song because of the layered harmonies and because of the chord progression. And then I listened to it again and I was like, oh no, I love this song because the drums do this incredible thing and then they stop and it makes me want to hear more and then they come back in and all that other stuff that I always have, always have known about. <laughs> I feel like more than anything else that's something that I'm grateful to have had. Like, well, I mean there's a, there's a lot that I'm grateful for but um, just in the fact that I now hear things that I never heard before I feel like my ear has been yeah like made better <laughs> by the I, experience. I think it shows the the, between Fireflies and the 18 months that now we're releasing the Sandcastle King, the amount of polish and decisions that are made on this album are awesome. And Thank like, you. Very well thought out and very well sculpted, Thank which you. definitely shows a process of, of refinement yeah. over time. So what is the, the inspiration behind wanting to share the sound and these colors with your audience? Um. Yeah, it's like something that's difficult to articulate. I, um, you know, I've loved music since the time I was a small child um, and have always felt like music, when you give into it, 
can make you feel and understand things that can't be felt and understood with words alone. You know, words are very powerful, but somehow music goes a step beyond them. Mm -hmm. And um, having that experience myself is one of my, you know, most, it's like one of the things I live for, <laughs> you know, is to lay on the ground with headphones on and really sink into some, something that someone else has built for me to listen to. Um, and not do anything else, like that's a thing that I do. And um, you know, for whatever whatever thing that drives artists to create, you know, and just wanting to share and um, feel like we can share the same space when we are um, communing in that way. I you know, I think I think that's what drives me and it's the same thing that drives other artists as well. Awesome. What about uh, maybe the listeners? If you're knowing that you've had these experiences, would there be anything that you would want to directly impart to the listeners in your music and say, like, this is something that I hope you find there? Um, so I'm a person who experiences my emotions very strongly. I'm, you know, like, I'm not the kind of person who can go out and suppress what I'm feeling and just put it away when I have to go do other things. It's can be very distracting, like, kind of the kind of person who has to, like, take a sick day when I'm t too upset about something. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that there are people in the world who, you know, maybe feel shame about the strong feelings that they feel, and I don't want them to feel that shame. <laughs> I want them to know that that's a beautiful part of being human. And I think if there's any one thing I could tell people, it's, you know, to just allow even the painful experiences and the painful feelings to contribute to the beautiful experience of being human. Um, I hope that doesn't sound right. <laughs> no, I, that's a great answer. Like, I think that, that those are the experiences that make it beautiful to be human. Yeah. You know, to take those away, what are you doing? Right. Yeah. You wouldn't be making any of this music. Yeah, definitely that's not. <laughs> yeah. So, no, that that's awesome. That's awesome. I, I, I appreciate that a lot as a listener and musician. Yeah. So, that's really cool. Yeah, um, I, I used to, like, apologize that, like, all my songs were sad. Like, I used to, you know, get on stage and be like, oh, yeah, sorry, guys. Like, it's going to be another 45 minutes of sad songs. And now I'm kind of just like, I don't know, I'm just ready to own it. <laughs> You know, like some of them are sad, or maybe not sad, but like some of them are about intense emotions, and that's fine. <laughs> what inspired you to join up with Soundbridge and to get involved there? Yeah, um, well, so you guys have worked with some local artists that I really admire. Um, Antonio Lopez and Shannon Address are two that come to mind specifically, and um, I, you know, I just, I, I thought the idea of, you know, making space specifically for local artists and community connection was a, a really cool thing and a really worthwhile thing to be pursuing. Um, you know, I, it can be, it can, I don't, it can be easy as an artist to fall into this idea of like, oh, you know, like, no one's really listening to what I'm doing or like only, you know, I only have a handful of followers. Um, you know, there's this whole pressure of like making it in some way. And I think stepping back from that and just realizing that community is so important and you know it's still valid to be making music for you know just the people around you and that's still a really cool thing to be doing um, I think that's probably what drew me drew me into what you guys are doing awesome awesome where can we find more of your music other than July 13th this gets released and <laughs> the 14th of the laughing goat yeah um, let's see so my website is just imaguire.com um, and you can listen to my EP for free, um, and I think I'm going to make it available to download for free as well once the album comes out. Um, so that's mostly what I have out right now is the EP and then this album, and then there's a couple of things on YouTube, um, and you can find that just by searching for I Am Acquire as well. So July 14th, 8pm, Laughing Goat in yes. Boulder. Yes. 
this debuts in live format for all to see. Yes. Which is very exciting. And with that, anything else that you want to add or you want to share in addition? Um, oh, this has been great. Yeah, thank you for talking to me. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for taking the time to come out and talk to us. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in learning more about SoundBridge Music and becoming a part of Music for Change, check us out at soundbridgemusic.org.